All right, we are live for the Tuesday edition of The Morning Check-In. And as always, excited to be back, looking forward to connecting and uh, sharing with you the latest and greatest of what's happening and what's trending in the news uh, this early morning. So hope everyone is doing well. I'll give it a second before I begin uh, my news debriefing. <laughs> as well as my rants and everything else. Uh, looking forward to having a good live stream as always. Let me know for those who are plugged in how things sound in the chat and why you're at it. If you don't mind, hit that thumbs up button and uh, show your support for the channel. And uh, we're going to make it a good, informative, yet uh, interesting live stream as always. So, all right, let me know where you're watching from in the chat, man. Take a minute, uh, show some love in the, in the chat. Let me know where you're watching from. And also, it's been a minute since I've heard uh, from any of my Aussie or Australian brothers and sisters. And so um looks like uh, things are not going too well for them, but then again, going quite well for the uh, powers that be trying to uh, further the digital enslavement uh, through the closing of banks and the push to go cashless and everything else that um, is being rolled out first around the world. So, of course, here in the U.S., we'll probably get the last of all these efforts, but hopefully with enough information as well as effort to push back and to resist, we can uh, prolong this as long as we can. So I have about uh, six or seven tabs open that I'm going to uh, share in reference to this uh, slow but steady removal of cash out of the people's hands and into and forcing people to, to pretty much play into what they've already positioned as the preferred medium of uh, exchange, which is the digital representations of currency with the tap and go and the swiping of cards. So going to be an interesting morning. Okay, we got who's the Jew checking in? We got uh, Abraham checking in from Dallas. How you doing, my friend? Appreciate you. We got Vu Tran the. How you doing? How you doing? Appreciate you, man. It's always going to uh, cover a little bit of everything, but more so today focusing on what's happening in Australia because I think uh, we can learn a lot uh, from the slow and steady progression of this digital uh, transformation that's underway because it happens all around us. And I'll say us referring to those in the United States of America just because we have the reserve currency. So, so that affords us the opportunity to, um, I guess, learn from events happening around us while we also are in a very unique position as well because it gives us more time to do little small practical things as well as maybe some larger things and uh, it has a lot to do with being able to take advantage of the manipulation because everything is centered around keeping the federal reserve note aka the dollar at the center point of the monetary structure so uh, we all know that's changing slowly but surely and so basically what that does is allow us to prepare whatever that means for you so uh, that's kind of what I'm going to focus on moving forward throughout the remainder of this year, taking small steps bit by bit as more people wake up, more as more people dial in to the rethink of the dollar concept, try my best just to you know provide information. That's all I can do, provide information. And hopefully more people are able to uh, take this information, process it and then take action with it. So, all right, we got Dominique checking in as well. We got Caesar D checking in as well. Uh, Ed checking in X. Appreciate you guys, man. It's always going to start off with some good news, get into some market activity, look at some numbers for whatever that's worth. And then we'll dive into the news stories. Got a couple of little quick little videos to share with you as well and uh, get into some other things happening on the ge geopolitical side. And uh, also, uh, you guys, I'm sure keeping your eyes to the ground and eyes open. Let me know what you guys are seeing, what stories interest you, excite you, concern you. When we get into the Q&A portion, drop it in the uh, tab and we'll uh, hopefully touch on it. So, all right. As always, let's get into it, man. Let's get to it. I want to get in uh, first and foremost with that good news, I call it. Starting off today with some good news, and it comes from the Word of God. And so you guys can't really read it on the screen, but I shared it in the community tab as well as in the Telegram and things like that. And so make sure you guys uh, go connect there. And before I do that, before I get into this, I forgot to do my typical uh, you know, reminder. So for those who may not be familiar, or if you are, hit that bell notification so you'll be notified as well as uh, subscribe. So you can stay plugged in. And if you have not, make sure you go subscribe to all the socials. And more, more important one is a Telegram group where I share articles, the community share articles of, of all types. There's no no subjects, uh, no subjects are, 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 are barred from the Telegram just because it's people sharing what concerns them. And that's what's most important. So check in on Telegram. Links in a tab for those who want to get plugged in. All right. Let's get into this good news. Uh, starting the day off right. April 2nd. 
It's called Eternal Companion. I'm going to thumb through it real quick. Hopefully, give you guys something to chew on, charge your spiritual man up, and get you started on your day this morning on a good foot. And so this is from John 14, verses 15 through 18, the New King James Version. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And then he closes off by saying, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And so he says here, in these comforting words, Jesus promises the gift of the Holy Spirit to his followers, a promise that extends to all believers across time. This passage highlights the intimate connection between love for Jesus and obedience to his teachings, revealing the de deep relationship he desires with us. The Holy Spirit is referred to as the helper or advocate, indicating a presence that supports, guides, and intercedes on behalf of the believers. This divine helper embodies the truth and becomes an eternal companion, distinguishing believers from the world that cannot accept him due to its lack of recognition and relationship with God. Jesus reassures his followers that they will not be left as orphans, abandoned or alone. Instead, he promises a profound presence within them. The Holy Spirit assure, ensuring that that ensuring they are never without guidance, comfort, or company. This indwelling of the Spirit marks a transformative relationship between where believers are empowered to live in alignment with God's will and bear witness to his truth in the world. Today, let us reflect on the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. May we cherish this divine companionship, seeking to deepen our relationship with God through obedience and love. In moments of loneliness or uncertainty, remember Jesus' promise you are not alone for the spirit of truth abides with you forever. And the closing prayer here says, Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, my helper and guide. Help me to love and obey you more deeply that I may that I may fully experience your presence and guidance in my life. Remind me that I am never alone for you abide with me forever. Teach me to listen to your spirit and to live out your truth each day in Jesus name. Amen. All right, my good people, that is the good news for this morning. Eternal companion through the Holy Spirit. So that came to mind this morning, you know, just more so reminding myself about the importance of really focusing on what is present now and what is a helper in time of need. And don't forget, for those who are in Christ, we have a down payment inside of us. And he is called the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, which is the one who's supposed to lead us and guide us to all truth. So truth is available for those who seek it. So let the Holy Spirit guide and lead you and you'll be on your way in a direction that will be very uh, pleasing and fulfilling to the Father. So that's the good news for this morning, my good people. And as always, before I move any further, let me do uh, just some quick reminders here that we're going to get into the news um, and get this party started as always. Yeah, man, I'm enjoying these morning streams, man. Get a chance to connect early, get in, and then get uh, about the day. All right. So, as always, I want to make sure I remind people of the opportunity to test your dollar IQ. And so, the biggest thing I think is the most important is filling in that gap of information that's not there. We were not taught a lot of things in school on purpose because the whole goal is to dumb us down, distract us with all this other stuff happening in the world but getting back to the basics of understanding what the difference between sound money and fiat currency is has never been more important so this quiz the dollar iq quiz is 10 quick questions it gives you a chance to see where you stand in reference to your historical knowledge base of what we call the federal reserve note aka the dollar so 10 quick questions rethinking the dollar.com forward slash quiz take this and see how you do and then there are steps to follow as far as just getting edu you know getting information and getting educated and then of course share this so other people can find out what's going on and have a chance to also uh, see where they stand as far as the dollar iq so rethinking the dollar.com forward slash quiz go check it out people and then also want to make sure i continue to remind people of the opportunity they have at hand here to preserve and protect their wealth and so colonialsmetalsgroup.com forward slash rtd is a way where people can actually take back powers into their own hands by getting possession of gold and silver uh and and uh, basically taking I, a self-directed custody ira is the goal so here you can see on the page here uh, fill out this short little survey here. You'll speak with an expert on, on the other end of this. They'll help guide you into what might be suitable for you. And so just a good way of diversifying your portfolio and taking back 
what is definitely yours because if it's in the system it's good to say that uh it might experience some type of uh problems moving forward and so colonialsmetalgroup.com forward slash rtd and also there's a number here you guys can call and click the link in the description get all the information you need and also for those who qualify for some programs they offer you get a chance to also get a free safe as well as get a nice little stack of silver on top of that so check them out uh links in the description if you guys uh are interested all right uh let's get into the stories of the day man and so uh it looks like april 2nd has been chosen as uh <laughs> take back your cash day in Australia. And so I think we can learn a lot from stories like this because we won't hear about it on the mainstream media here, but slowly but surely the uh, banks in Australia have been deliberately closing down uh, ATMs as well as closing a lot of banks on purpose, forcing people into the tap and pay model, as well as some banks opening up their own unique uh, apps that uh, for the most part has, already done some of the things we've talked about before i believe on the back end the tokenizing of assets uh via deposits for their own purposes and getting people out there uh basically just not having options so the goal is to slim down your chances and options of getting outside the system by keeping you in it via this digital transformation and so real quick here i'm going to share with you a little news story that caught people's attention i'm gonna share with you some things that's trending and then we'll get into some stories and talk about how this came about on top of other things so check this out real quick following i love this social media post they say second of april stand your ground day is draw out some cash day everyone who can go to your bank's atm draw out some cash even if it's just 20 bucks if everyone did this it would draw thousands of dollars out into the community and banks will be running around to refill atms we'll let them know how we feel remember second of april we want this to go nationwide tell your friends never let cash vanish because that is indeed what will happen if we don't take matters into our own hands and remember it's a very handy way to get around the surcharge check out this article by the abc all right so i'll leave it there and so here is what is actually happening somebody share this you know so people are literally recording people going to the atms going to the banks and literally you know paying cash day everybody's encouraged to go get cash out the bank while it's still available to them just because at the trajectory which things are speeding up in australia you know the goal is by october of this year to have majority of the banks phasing out the ability for people to get cash so they're ramping up uh speed and at a very alarming rate and we can learn a lot from this because it's just a matter of time before stuff like this spreads further and so what's going on here let's get into the news directly i'm not gonna waste any time um so right as of right now let me share with you what's happening so over on twitter you just type in hashtag cashless and you know everybody's here's a picture here people at the bank we got uh, a lot of you know information here on cashless push going on in australia and then if it, there's another one here uh let me see here this is a uh, cash is king and so as much as we talk about or as much as i've referenced even ray dalio has talked about cash is trash in the short term cash still serves an important role because it is something that you can actually possess in your hands outside of the system and it gives you some sort of anonymity to where you don't have to be all your transactions don't have to be public or not public but private information in reference to the banks and only knowing and stuff like that so here's just some things that cash is keen is trending out of australia and there's a big push of just getting cash out using cash for the day and so people are sharing their thoughts and of course this factors into their advancement and their cbdc uh research and stuff like that so here's just some tweets here uh of what's happening on april 2nd which is today in australia which is nighttime there but earlier today when we were asleep they were pulling out cash so what is going on there let's get into it so here we have an article let me actually make this bigger and so this has to do with the cashless transition steam rolls ahead after major banks closes all branches so imagine you know we've witnessed since the whole post pandemic era banks closing down nationwide here in the u.s and so ATMs, just you know, I'm sure you can drive around and see Buku banks 
that are no longer operational. And it's not by accident. It's part of a greater design to bring in stuff like this here in the U.S. as time moves forward. But there we get a taste of what they're doing in real time. So to give you an idea real quick here, um, it says, I mean, it says a new all in one mobile app offers what it, uh, developers claim is Australia's first end to end digital banking platform for the country's 2.4 million businesses with fewer than 10 employees. So they're consolidating physical brick and mortar bank branches down to an app where a lot of banks will be able to utilize. So it's going to be something interoperable amongst the banks type of thing where people will be able to do their transaction solely digitally because there will be no outlets to go get cash eventually. And it says here, uh, the announcement comes a day after the Bank West announced that it is closing 45 of its branches and transitioning the remaining 15 uh, to Commonwealth Bank of America branches going digital only by October 2024. And so it just gives more insights as to what you know that entails. It says going cashless has its risks. The disappearance of cash, should it happen, is not without issues, however. Then he goes on to talk about the different banks and the problems with that, yada, yada. We know that. Okay, so what else is happening here? Australia's transition to a fully cashless society now is in full swing as major banks close off physical branches. More insights saying the same thing. It gives more numbers, more dollar figures. And ultimately, because in this post-pandemic world where everybody was spooked into uh, not going to ATMs and withdrawing cash because it can contain the virus and germs and all that stuff that was used to scare people, People have been or more than OK to use the tap and pay it as well as a debit card, because that's just how society has evolved. More people feel comfortable and it's easier and more convenient to tap and swipe than to actually go get cash. And so this is the part of the excuse that the Australian Central Bank is using, saying that cash is activity is increasing. Therefore, why even have cash? Because it costs us to produce it, maintain it, secure it. Well, we can just go solely digital. That's a part of their argument. And so here, here's more insights here. It says Aussies planning to protest tap and go society with the cash out day, referring to today. And so as you mentioned from that, as I mentioned from that little our interview here, here's more information here where they're telling people basically just draw out a minimum of $20 and for that entire week, this week here, whenever you go transact in the real world, use cash instead of the tap and go system. And it'll put banks in on, on the hook to where they'll have to go restock ATMs as well as have these uh, armored trucks bring in cash in real time. So uh, because they're saying that there's not enough cash in circulation to go around. So the goal is to put pressure on them to bring cash back to the banks and it'll eventually slow things down in some capacity. And so here is another narrative that plays into what's going on. CBA, Central Bank of Australia, boss or commonwealth bank i'm sorry uh suggest ban on cash payments above 500 dollars. and so another way of trying to push back against the people's demand for the continuation of cash they're basically saying we're going to put a threshold on how much you can spend so it says cash payments above 500 should be banned to help curb the shadow economy according to commonwealth bank ceo matt uh, Kalman, uh, who outlined a bold suite of economic uh, reforms, suggestions for the federal government at the banking summit on Tuesday, a week ago. <laughs> he said this includes reconfiguring the income tax brackets by cutting the income tax rate to 30 percent for workers earning less than 300,000, as well as yada, yada, yada. And so once again, painting cash as being something that is a threat to the mainstream economy because of shadow banking, you know, here in the U.S., they use cat, they use money laundering, uh, trafficking, drug use, all the stuff like that that the banks, you know, the global systemic important banks have been allowed to do, but they don't want the average Joe being able to do it. Ultimately, is what it boils down to. So, more push for going cash. There, cash is there. Shouldn't be a surprise there. And so here we have uh, another reason as to why people are pushing back. And so it says here, a cash campaigner slams the hidden fees in going cashless. By basically said, I got surcharged four dollars and fifty two for paying a bill. And so once again, people don't really take into consideration the fees that are 
charged when you use these tap and pay services because ultimately the intermediary and third parties such as visas and mastercards of the world they charge for all the activity both the person or the ent entity which is then passed on to the consumer so we can avoid all that simply by just paying cash but then again bit by bit they're going to phase it out and so uh, at some point in the near future uh there will be no uh, role for cash in society so the whole point of just sharing this stuff real quick briefly is that there is a there is going to be a continuous push of going cash so what we can learn from this for those who are tuned in is to make sure that you have some cash in your wallet if you if you don't just so you can i guess push back the slow but steady efforts here in the u.s uh, of also taking us down this cash as road which is going to be inevitable and so Get some cash, put it in your pocket. Make sure you should definitely, in my recommendations, is to make sure you have some cash on deck, whether it be for the emergency's sake or, say, for example, we've learned a lot of, of what happened in Canada, I think it was a year ago, where their uh, internet service went down and therefore all the tap and pay stuff came to a halt. And we saw that people were scrambling to the banks to try to get cash. But then again, there was no power at ATM. So having cash, having cash as a reserve, in the short term, it's definitely something people should definitely uh, have on deck. So just something worth bringing to your attention, my good people. All right, a couple more stories here. And then we'll get a little Q&A real quick and uh, find out what you guys are keeping your eyes on. And so outside of uh, what we're being told and sold, here is something that uh, should be important to people because when it comes to using technology, especially when it's being advertised as free, just to sign up and use type of platform such as the Facebooks, Instagrams, uh, YouTube, and stuff like that. Anything that's a public traded company that offers a service of social media interaction, your data is the product. You become the commodity for them to use your data from. And so here's something that uh, is, should be very concerning. It says Netflix paid a hundred million dollars to access private Facebook messages. So ultimately they've collaborated in sharing information with a little bit of a money ex monetary exchange there for access to your data so it's good to say everybody for the most part has a netflix account and so everybody has some form of a facebook whether it be for personal family usage or whatever so your communications amongst family and friends was used uh has been used to market towards you ultimately so real quick here it says According to a document shared by ex-user Didi, a streaming service, uh, payment net Netflix, and social media giant Facebook exchanged private user information. According to the document, Facebook gave access to user users' private messages in exchange for their watch history. It says, moreover, the video streaming platform allegedly paid over $100 million. It says, according to the document, in 2011, the streaming platform announced a Facebook integration to share users' data internationally. So all along... And that's one thing about Facebook. I, you know, I, I have an account, but I don't share my personal stuff on. I just share, you know, information like this stuff here. But people share their entire lives for free, not realizing that their data is the income stream for these mega companies. And so to be have your data used against you to sell and market to you further into consumption is, you know, from a business standpoint, it's a great tactic. But from a consumer standpoint, you know, once again, unless you got shares in Facebook as an investment in your portfolio, you ain't getting paid no way, form or fashion. It says, moreover, according to the document, Netflix began lobbying Congress to allow for such data sharing in the U.S. So just a little side note there for people who care about their data, their personal data being used against you. And then here we have another interesting story here. Uh, it says, former top general warns of inevitable ISIS terrorist threat in the u.s so uh we're witnessing or we've witnessed rather over the last week after the uh alleged isis attack in the uh, russian area and of course putin has since come out and said that you know he know his intel tells him that you know it, it's not from isis directly you know came through the ukrainian proxy war that they're uh fighting there but then the western media here especially our intel jumped on the whole idea of it being isis and whatever whatever. but we know isis is a, one of our three-letter agencies funded operations so they're all one of the same but here we're being warned by a former general so more 
death, distractions, distractions and diversion tactics is underway. And so when I saw this, I thought like, OK, we don't know who has come through the border thus far. It's good to say a little bit of every militia slash secret paid organization has, you know, somehow some way been positioned intentionally in this country. So uh, is this a warning of what could possibly be in the works in the weeks, months ahead? And all this, not all this, but a good portion of all this is centered around this presidential cycle, needing to thwart the plans of any opposition to um, the globalists, the deep state, whatever they're going to be called, you know, principalities and powers, whatever we want to call them, you know, their plan at moving humani humanity towards this uh, old world order, as I'm going to refer to it as, where just more consolidation of power, more big government, no borders. We all become one nation, one happy kumbaya under the boot of the man itself. But uh, is this a warning is basically what, you know, I, I took from this uh, as to what we can expect. So we typically know that this group here uh, tends to operate in areas where there's large gatherings. And so between now and a presidential cycle, any environment where there's a large gatherings tend to be events where mass um, destruction takes place as far as, you know, bombing, shootings, whatever. So just things to be on the lookout for, man. Uh, we live in a day and age where I believe it, everything is being done intentionally. So uh, it's just good to be on your on your on guard. And as always, like I would say, if you see anything that don't look right, call it out, sniff it out and uh, stay clear. Just because, you know, you have to protect yourself nowadays more than ever, because our country has been hijacked deliberately and it's not even our country no more. Like we're living literally this country has become a foreign. <laughs> I don't even recognize this country but like that for, you know, for what's remaining of it. You know, so I'm very concerned as someone who lives in the great state of Michigan. <laughs> so just anyway, just something worthwhile. Share your thoughts in the comment section. And then that's all I had, I think. That's all I had for uh, just some things that caught my attention. But real quick, let's check in in real time with what's happening, uh, let's, what's, trend, what's trending. I like to check out what's trending on X because that's the best place to get some of the latest. And then I'll open up the mic. We'll get going, man, uh, with some Q&A. So if you got thoughts, ideas, suggestions, what's on your radar, let us know. And uh, this whole Palestinian thing uh, is it, really, really, you know, the IDF, that is something that caught my attention. So here we have what's trending is IDF. I, I, I tend to stay away from this just because. And then we got what is Christ trending? We got uh, DJT. And so I'll share some interesting thoughts on uh, – <laughs> Well, you know, the Donald J. Trump uh, SPAC, I, a.k.a. meme coin uh, yesterday that took a billion dollar dip based, based upon the fact they share their numbers and they're not even profitable. We got what is Christ? What the Christ? I'm not sure what that is. The IDF. But this is something that, you know, we had the World Health Kitchen, I think it was. World Kitchen, World something, you know, World Kitchen. Uh, what is it called? Uh, let me see. It was World. Uh, da, da, da. Anyway, seven uh workers from a health organ or from a food bank type of situation was unfortunately lost their lives in the gaza territory as you can see here uh wck's white humanitarian workers got bombed by israel despite driving around in wck marked vehicles in a safe zone and so once again like just seven people lost their lives man trying to be of of, of service to other people but this is israeli palestinian issue in that region there's a lot more to the story than we're going to be privileged to here but you know clearly something smells funny about all this to where take it with a grain of salt the story is more than what we're being told and whenever lives are being lost to me those are souls that are no longer in the land of the living and they those people enter eternity and their fate is sealed and that is of concern to me just because you know i just never like to i hate i hate to see people depart from this life and you know may may or may not have had a ch everybody had a chance but you know you never know people's you know spiritual state and you know it's final like, there's no coming back there's no getting a chance to do it again and you know i just as a believer want to make sure as many people had that chance to uh accept christ as their savior because we're witnessing all types of atrocities at an alarming rate and you know ultimately all this is about securing souls for eternity's sake and when I see stuff like this, it really, you know, you know, touches my heart personally. So, but anyway, um, 
Let's keep it going, man. Let's keep it going. Let's uh, let's get to some Q and A. Feel free to throw out some thoughts, ideas, suggestions. We'll go a couple more minutes. Curious to see what you guys are keeping an eye on. What concerns you? What excites you? Uh, Aces of Silver says, CERN put put in prayer, not fear. April eighth. Yeah, that CERN situation. That's real. Like the <laughs> the and I, I, I you know principalities and powers is probably another word I love using just because those are the controlling forces of government, politics, and everything. You know, money and everything in between. But the fact that they built machinery that tries to extract power to tap into invisible matter, aka dark matter, and to contact some type of being or form on the other side of that should be very concerning. Like what in the world and why would people want to tap into something on the other side? And it has everything to do with man's quest to play God, be God and to distort and disrupt God's ultimate plan for humanity. It's like literally, you know, this is Satanism at its finest, literally because Satan knows he's on a limited time frame here. And so trying to do his best through the powers that be and through technology and everything else to, you really usher in, um, you know, that, that, uh, yeah, yeah, his forces. So, but we know things have to take place. We know God uses all this ultimately for his glory. So prayer is definitely needed over fear because we know the enemy loses. So it's not much really to, to debate about it. Uh, low blood pressure says Putin deporting Muslims. Yes, I saw that. I saw that. And that definitely is concerning. But then again, when you have, a direct um, threat, both internally and externally, from forces that are being, you know, like the U.S. government loves using any and anybody to accomplish their goals. And so the establishment of these entities, ISIS, Al Qaeda, and all the other extremist groups that they fund and support, they've monetized and r- r- radicalized, if I can use that word, a lot of these entities and allow them to infiltrate various countries. So in one way, Putin's protecting his own nation state, but then also you can say that, you know, he's discriminating from a spiritual religious standpoint. So that's a fine line, man. And that's a tough position to be in, but uh, Putin, I'm assuming not standing up for him, not justifying anything he's doing, but he's trying to operate in the best interest of his country. So it says Russia mass supporting the Muslims Uh, migrants follow Moscow terror attacks. So, Hey, he know that his enemy comes in many forms and fashions. So shouldn't be surprised there, LBP. I'm sure you're not. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. What we got here? Spiritually, scripturally, scripture was a scripturally. Everyone go does grades. I'm not sure what that's about. Forgive me. CERN is literally researching uh, the universe. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's evil. Uh, Joe, 100 percent. But but then again, we can all probably agree that, you know, there's a fascination with mankind's desire to be God, play God through this transhumanistic journey that everybody wants to go down of trying to decode human DNA to live longer and to basically uh, take on that role of a of God, all knowing power type of activity using AI and the quest for supreme quantum quantum supremacy and stuff like that ultimately concentrated power in the hands of people who don't have the best interest in mankind tends to lead towards evil. And so I, I, I am not against it or for it. I know certain things have to play out. And so I just realized that based upon what I see, uh, whenever concentration of power takes place, it tends to hurt, turn out to be harmful for humanity. And so I like to say, name one thing that man has invented that hasn't been used against us. And then I usually wait for a response, like just because at some point it always is concentrated up to the very top of the of the pyramid of power and we become slaves to it. So that's just my thoughts on the CERN. And uh, could be right, could be wrong. But then again, it's just an opinion. Uh, what gold, what says here, what gold lose gain is value once fiat is replaced by crypto bit, crypto bit, crypto or BOT. Would gold lose its gain? Um, uh, great question, there, pneumatic. I, I don't think gold will lose its uh, shine just because it's from the earth, and it has eternal and monetary and electric elect- elect- electrical use cases. Has a lot of use cases, so it's not going anywhere. It will always be used as a resort of wealth preservation, 
amongst the people who are trying to enslave us digitally. So central banks will always race towards gold because that is a way that they can keep their system honest amongst themselves. And once all that stuff is done and settled, then the CBDCs will inevitably be rolled out as a way of keeping the people enslaved digitally. So if you haven't noticed, which everybody should have by now, why is mainstream media falling in love with this digital transformation, i.e. centered around Bitcoin? That should be of concern. But then again, they're not reminding people or encouraging people to diversify into a variety of things. Why not have both gold and Bitcoin if there was true non-biased information coming from our media? But we know media is bought and paid for by the banks themselves and all the Black Rocks and Vanguard. So they have a very uh, 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 biased approach and need to steer people's attention in a particular direction. So I always keep in mind that whenever the majority are running in one direction, you got to question why. And if it's being encouraged and incentivized to go in that direction and people aren't asking questions or even giving a little bit of pushback, then you might not want to follow that crowd because typically those are the sheep who are heading towards a slaughter of some kind. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion there. Um, what we got here is physical, AKA real. Uh, what is AKA? Not sure what that is. Uh, imagine thinking the almighty creator creating worthless, creating something being worthless because man, right. And so what I always, I mean, what really brings everything back home to me, and I will continue to uh, mention this, is that while the world is being steered in a particular direction, just remember what has been given to mankind as the true method and medium of value. And it all takes place right here. Like this is the periodic table of elements. These are the ingredients <laughs> that, God used to construct everything in the visible realm. Everything you look at, touch, taste, and handle comes from this periodic table. These are chemical elements that man has been gifted to use to create with. And so everything you're looking at, plastic, wood, gold, silver, Bitcoin, paper, they all can be formed from this element period here. So the person who has access to this, whether indirectly or directly, are the ones who have true wealth. Everything that has been spun out as a product, whether it be a company and we buy in their share prices, that's investment, that's investing created by man, designed to keep your currency, your energy and your time in the system itself. Then they spin off more digital products such as digital ledger technology and you know blockchain and uh, what, what else they give us, you know, uh, uh, what they call mutual funds and uh, ETFs and all these products, they're created by man to keep us entrapped into this in their system. But those who hold the real wealth above my head here in their metallic form, as well as all the other forms, that's the true wealth. So people who have more access to this will do good no matter what happens, whether depression, recession, whatever, reset, it ultimately goes back to the periodic table. So that's real wealth. Just a little side note for those who may not know. Uh, oh, Eugene, also known as. Okay. <laughs> Short abbreviation there. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, science says, let's change the world. God says, let's love the world. James, appreciate you, man. Uh, I think it's going to come like a thief in the night. Okay, we're getting into some bi biblical prophecy there. Uh, what else we got? Here? Only those who love God. Okay, a lot of spiritual back and forth there. And Harrison says, if they do roll out a full CBC, don't think they will try to ban purchases of metals and crypto. Uh, do you think they will try to ban purchase of crypto and metal to attempt to let it uh, live slightly longer at the cost of the people? Uh, great question there. So uh, CBDCs will be rolled out officially. Like, you know, CBDCs, it's, 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 it's inevitable. You can't stop it. We can only slow down things and prolong the inevitable, but CDC, CBDC, central bank digital currencies are inevitable just because that's where technology is advancing us towards as well as the governmental structure and the monetary authority. So you, in, in, in general, everything is already predominantly di uh, digital. So uh, and the plus 99.99% of people only know currency as digital. 
very little uses cash or people don't even know metal and gold and silver. So it won't take much for people to buy into whatever comes next as their solution. So it's more so the timing of it. And so uh, I believe that once as officially rolled out, once CBDC is rolled out, you can bet the following things will take place. And I, I shared this on Twitter yesterday and nobody bothered to uh, comment. I love messing with the, the crypto people just because, you know, it's all uh, speculation until it's not. But uh, let me see what I put out there. Uh, what I put, I put it the other day. Uh, let me see. I can't find it. But I put out something, but basically saying that um, once uh, there's a monetary hiccup, CBDCs are rolled out as a solution by all nations globally. Once CBDCs are implemented and activated in all 190 countries or so, every country will be forced to use a CBDC. And once that happens, decentral ledger technology. Bitcoin and the Bitcoin mining will become a national risk. It become a it become a threat to national security, and governments will join together with, without a problem, to ban anything that threatens their control, i.e., Bitcoin mining, uh, private nodes ran on servers, stuff like that, because all that stuff is public, visible information. So, they will come together in unison, ban any type of Bitcoin mining for the environment or just because it's a threat to the CBDC. Because you will not have CBDCs and Bitcoin and all those other cryptocurrencies coexisting together in a world where you know the bankers and the governments are not going to give up control and allow you to no longer become a monetary debt slave so it's just a matter of time and i believe by before 2030 we'll have a better understanding as to what bitcoin is really all about but of course of course purchasing gold and silver metals will be a problem as well uh, bullion dealers may or may not be operational because more people by that time will will be running to gold and silver if they can get a hold of it and so that'll be a threat to the system. So any way people can be further enslaved and have very few outlets out of the out of the system will be shut off. So of course, I do believe that will be possible. So uh, what else? And that's why between now and then there will be parallel economies. There will be the mainstream economy, which you'll have to have a digital ID, social credit system score, CBDC to participate in. Then it'll be the underground car economy, the black market, and and the barter economy, and you know, the, that other economy that will not be, you know, um, very uh, friendly to use and it'd be very dangerous and everything else, because that's where, you know, they're going to say that's where all the crime activity takes place. So stuff like that. And somebody a while ago mentioned a movie. Um, I think it was Blade Runner. Or no, was it Total Recall? Total Recall, I think it was. Somebody mentioned that about you got the above ground where people exist, but in a digital and surveillance state. Then you got the underground where everything takes place, uh, you know, on the you know, I wouldn't say black black market has, has been used as a as a as a derogatory terminology. I would say uh, the libertarian economy, the patriot economy, or whatever economy it might come about that gives more of a positive spin on it. Because once again, it's just we the people, we the people's economy. You know, we got the banker and politicians' economy. We got we the people's economy. And so, I guess that's what we need more of nowadays to get that going, get that operational now. As an alternative, would be something worthwhile. So I'm sure there's people out there in the prepper community as well as people in, you know, like um, Craigslist is a good example. People have been able to participate hand to hand, peer to peer, that type of stuff. So it's 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 in our future, man. It's in our future. The best thing we do is prepare for it as best we can and inform other people while we still can. That's all. That's all. Um, all right, good people. Uh, we're about that 43 minute mark. And as always, man, it's great to connect with you guys. Hopefully, you guys got some information here, got informed here. For, if you found value, hit that thumbs up button. Take this video, please, and share it for so other people can see what's happening to our brothers and sisters in other countries so we can shine light on it and expose the enemy for what they are and hopefully be able to resist. The more people that can resist, the longer the time we'll have of thwarting the enemy's plans. So, once again, be blessed. Be